Good morning, everybody. Brian Newbert here uh, from GoldenBlack.com. Once again, with your GoldenBlack.com Purdue Basketball Daily. You're going to have to bear with me here. I'm trying to ignore my cat meowing outside the office door. Um, he, he is a huge distraction, and I'm going to try to be a professional about this, and I'm going to try to get through this video without getting up and giving him what he wants, which is to come in here and chew on all my stuff. Um, today's topic, uh, I was just going to talk about the sophomore guards a little bit. Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer, uh, perhaps you've heard of them. Um, a major storyline uh, behind this season for Purdue is those two guys' collective jump from one year to the next. You know, typical college basketball, college basketball development trajectories, the chronological passage of time, the aggregation of experience, so on and so forth, uh, suggests typically that players make a pretty considerable step forward between their first and second years which would be a mouthful for Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer because, as I've mentioned many times before, Purdue's success last season was made possible by two things. One, obviously, being Zach Eady turning into Superman, um, and the other one being uh, Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer being as ready as they were, as good as they were right away as true freshman players at a very high level. Uh, what they did last season... It was very, very uncommon, very, very difficult, and um, Purdue's success last season would not have been possible without it. Was it always a straight line? Uh, it was not, nor should it ever have expect be expected to be. There were ups and downs, but there were exponentially more ups than there were downs. Um, you look at what Braden Smith brought to the point guard position, which was the single biggest question on a team with a lot of questions coming the last season. Keep in mind, Purdue did not get help at point guard um, last year. It was basically kicking Braden Smith into the deep end of the pool and telling him to figure it out. Um, and he did. And, you know, by and large, he was awesome. Fletcher Lawyer, um, you know, Zach Eady made a lot of clutch plays for Purdue last season, but I'm not sure anyone made more clutch plays than Fletcher Lawyer with the the – shot against Ohio State at Ohio State, the shot at Rutgers that really should have beaten Rutgers, uh, the pass to Zach Eady on the game winner against Michigan State. He was really, really good when it mattered most. And, uh, you know, he was his second week as a college basketball player. He was on the PK-85 all-tournament team, I think. And, you know, that that's, that's no small feat. Um, so, but both of those guys should be better this season than they were last season. Uh, I guess I'll go through the two of them um, one by one, even though I always tend to look at them as kind of co-players where it, you kind of lump them in together because their stories have been relatively similar. Um, but in silos, they're both very, very good players. I don't know why anyone would ever put them in silos, but uh, I think you know what I mean. Uh, Braden Smith, uh, you know, is going to be that player that Purdue expects to go to a whole other level this season. Um, Purdue is going to ask of him to look to score much more and then kind of play off that. There's going to be a fine line there between the decision-making Purdue needs uh, at that position uh, as it looks to obviously always keep turnovers to a minimum. Um, and the aggressiveness Purdue's going to ask of him. It's very important that he score uh, in the grand scheme of things because when he's – using ball screens when he's coming off actions and whatnot with Zach Eady, If people have to respect him as that primary scorer in that, in that action, then it's less likely that they're going to both bail onto, onto Zach Eady. If they do, that's something Braden Smith needs to take advantage of. I, I think Purdue views um, Braden Smith as a player, much like they viewed Etwan Moore and Carson Edwards in the sense that, when he's looking to score, when he's playing to score, they think everything else in terms of playmaking and whatnot will come instinctively for him. Is it instinctively or instinctually? I've heard both. Um, I'm going to go with instinctively because that sounds correct. Um, but I think they just view him as a player that when they when he's looking to score, when he's dribbling the ball up the floor and people have to respect his his um his his propensity to pull up for a three pointer in their face if they come out to get him 
and give him an opportunity to drive past them, that's something that can really open up a lot of things for his game. Uh, as I said, if, if, if he's looking for those runners, if he's looking to get all the way to the rim out of that action with Edie, uh, I think a lot of stuff can come off that. I think Purdue feels the same way. So I would look for Braden Smith to, to really take a step as a scorer this season simply by virtue of, of emphasis. I think he'll be a better defensive player than he was last season too. My biggest question about Braden Smith coming into his freshman year was his the stuff he did in high school that made him so effective. Would it translate to the next level? Could he just drive into traffic and just make a play because he was a better player and a better athlete than everybody uh, he was playing against? That was an issue at times, very, very rarely, all things considered. But also from a defensive perspective, I wondered if he wouldn't just be so stubborn uh, and so um, aggressive that he would just think he could take the ball from people. Uh, and he would get in foul trouble here and there. Last year, Purdue could not afford him in foul trouble, and he never got in foul trouble. He never picked up those little ticky-tack, over-aggressive, over-competitive fouls that you know I, I, I suspected he might fall prey to at times. Uh, he did not. Uh, he, he was very level-headed. Offensively, he was very level. For the most part, he was very level-headed defensively, and that really paid off uh, for him right away. Uh, but I, I, I do think you'll see a much better, a much wiser player uh, as a sophomore this year. Fletcher Lawyer, um, why I'm not doing these guys one by one is, is stupid of me because that was a whole video right there just on Braden Smith. Fletcher Lawyer, um, you know, I know everybody looked at him last year and said, this guy's got to get bigger and stronger. Well, he, sure, but I don't know if that's ever realistic given his, his frame. The important part is he just – get a little bit sturdier, get a little bit stronger so that when, you know, he, he's going off, he's using off ball screens against Wisconsin and they're punching him in the liver, um, that he'd be better, uh, better handled, better suited to kind of handle that contact, not get pushed out of the play, things like that. That wasn't as big a deal last year as I thought it would be. I, I figured he would really struggle to get open in big 10 play once people started grabbing him and bumping him and, fouling him uh, off the ball and things like that. It wasn't that bad. What he needed last season was to simply keep his legs at the end of the year. I, I think he wore down. I think Braden Smith wore down. I think also Fletcher Lawyer was hurt at the end of the year. I think he had some shin issues. Uh, maybe the result of the Wisconsin-Michigan State defensive treatment, I don't know. But um, if he could have just played a full season at 100%, you know, I think that would have been, uh, I, I, I think that pe the way people perceive him right now would be very different. People would be talking about him as maybe a first or second team all Big Ten sort of guy uh, right now because he is that good. And I, I think people lose sight of things because they just remember, you know, the last week of the regular season or whatever it might have been. Um when he was struggling a little bit, and I didn't even have to go back and look uh, to see if he was even struggling. But I, I know his, his his shooting percentage was 32%, which isn't terrible for a freshman on high volume, but it, it it's also not what uh, a shooter of his caliber is capable of. He's an elite jump shooter, people. And I, I don't think that people understand how hard it is to average 12 points a game as a true freshman in the Big Ten. And to be the second leading scorer, on one of the best teams in college basketball, playing alongside a guy nobody has experienced playing alongside because he is such a unique player. Uh, I just think that is something that it, I, I think people haven't given him enough credit for. Maybe I'm shadow boxing with Twitter as I tend to do, but um, I, I just think he was a he was a very very good uh, offensive basketball player as a true freshman last season, a difference maker for Purdue. And a guy who's capable of, of even more this season. I think, you know, Purdue has pointed out the John Deeblers of the world and some of the best shooters uh, in the Big Ten over the years who have shot this as a freshman and then it's gone up to that uh, the following year. And it's going to be really hard for, for a guy like Fletcher Lord to ever be like a 40% guy on the volume he carries. Uh, that's just just the nature of it, but um, I, I think you're going to see him tack a bunch of points onto that three point shooting percentage, and on his volume, you add three percent to his shooting percentage, and that's like a hundred points. Um, 
I'm, my math is probably uh, a little raw this morning, so don't quote me on that. Um, but um, I think he's going to be really good for Purdue this season. I, I, I think that um, people are sleeping on him. Um, and uh, I think people are sleeping on Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer alike. And I think that when people, and I'm probably talking about more national people, more people away from Purdue are looking at Purdue, they're looking at Zach Eady and they're looking at what at what's coming back. They're not they're not pricing in the improvement that these two guys are going to make. As good as they were last season, they're not assuming significant steps forward for Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer. And they ought to be, because everything I've seen this summer, everything I've heard this summer, uh, especially about Braden Smith, um, has been that these guys are both going to take a pretty considerable jump this season. So that's what I got. Um, I'm going to be talking about a lot of the same stuff after a lot of games this season. So get ready to hear a lot of all this stuff over and over again. Um, be sure to visit goldenblack.com. Be sure to, if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to check that out. I think you will not be disappointed. As I say every morning, if you've sat through this for almost 12 minutes, you're just a degenerate enough to be interested in our product. I will be at Arkansas this weekend, so I will have lots of coverage from on-site from Bud Walton Arena, um, the Walmart capital of the universe, uh, Arkansas, uh, Benton, Arkansas, whatever it is, Bentonville, uh, Benton, Bentonville. I don't know. It, I, all I know is it's right by Fayetteville. So um, by all means, you can subscribe for a dollar for your first month uh, if you're so inclined, and I, I would urge you to be inclined. So uh, this is, once again, Brian Newbert from GoldenBlack.com with your GoldenBlack.com Purdue Basketball Daily. That's my cat outside the door meowing and trying to distract me. So thanks.